Vell. I'm very uh, excited to welcome to our conference, Pierre Vell. Welcome, Pierre. Hi, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> um, I uh, first met you in Paris, I think it was a little more than two years ago, um, mm -hmm. at a conference. Um, and uh, luckily, I was I was there in your presentation, and I was watching your slides, and I I was I was blown away at what you've been doing um, for decades on the question of hard science and nutrient levels in food and animal health and human health and soil carbon and water system function. It's uh, I'm, I'm honored to to welcome you today to our to present about the work of uh, Valorex and Blue Blancour and. Um, your science, um, and uh, look forward to engaging question and answers in about an hour. So, Thank take you. it away. Feel free to feel free to speak up. Okay. <laughs> You're generally soft spoken, as I recollect. So. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I will share my PowerPoint presentation now. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. So I'll try to do it. <laughs> well, okay. So thank you, Dan. Thank you, everybody. Uh, happy to be with you. Uh, I apologize because uh, my, I hope my English will be correct enough to, to make me understood. So thank you. It's correct. We, we met two years ago. It was the last uh, Paris Agricultural Show be, before the, the, the pandemic. So I remember the, the time we spent together, then we met in New York. And uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to present what, what we've done for 20 years now. So maybe first slide is about um, um, about One Health. One Health is, uh, it's not French, but it's very understand, very easy to understand. Um, maybe something like that, a healthy and living soil, nourishes plants, humans, and animals well. Healthy plants and healthy animals make healthy people. Is it simple? It is a marketing claim, or it is something uh, true? Uh, we think it's not too simple, but uh, health-oriented agriculture, that's what we call Le Blanc Health, is health-oriented agriculture, needs a, a strong scientific basis to, to go from a nice sentence to, to something uh, uh, to something clear and something uh, right. So I, I did three, three parts, uh, small parts about uh, what we've done the, the last uh, 20 years and what we are today in France and some other countries, mainly in, uh, in Europe. Uh, today, I, I would like to take the opportunity to speak about uh, the place of uh, health-oriented agriculture from my point of view in the pandemic uh, contest and to speak of biochemistry as a, really a chemistry of life, all life from soil to, to cell. And I will finish with uh, tomorrow. What is a place for a health-oriented agriculture for both uh, human health and uh, ecology? So first, uh, who we are, a short presentation. So my story started uh, 20 years ago. Uh, let's say this is the story of Le Blanc. My story started before. I'm an, an agronomist, and in uh, in in '92, I created a company that was dedicated to produce uh, protein, local protein, uh, to replace uh, imported soybean, uh, dealing with the dealing with the soils, uh, saying okay, maybe it's better to to produce here protein soil. Uh, to take a uh, nitrogen from the air, put a protein in the soil, change uh, one year of uh, protein seeds to cereal, etc. It's better than uh, producing uh, corn and uh, and wheat in France and importing uh, soybean from uh, South and North America. Uh, so we started um, uh, with the lupin, horse bean, uh, and linseed. Linseed was a uh, not exactly a protein seed, not a, a legume, but was interesting in, in terms of uh, animal health. So we started with uh, trials with a research institute. Of what is the impact of replacing uh, 
soybean with this mix of a protein seed plus a plus lean seed in uh, animal uh, diets. And then we we can measure improvement for uh, fertility or uh, less antibiotics, better health, etc. And then we continue to uh, to go. Is a, there is a benefit? Variety, diversity uh, has a benefit in terms of. Uh, uh, health of the of the soil, health of the cow, health of the pig, uh, and what about the nutritional content of uh, milk, egg, meat, etc. And so the the first point, the, the first step, was a clinical trial, very original one. We started in '99, and uh, in this trial, uh, we did eight clinical trials. But I will only speak of the the first one, the most important one because we, we took for three months, two group of 40 people with the, the hospital uh, people and the research, uh, medical research people, two groups of volunteers, healthy volunteers. They ate exactly the same regimen. Uh, I use the, the term regimen because regimen is for human regimen. Only the only thing that changed was the animal diet. Every, everybody, eight, uh, for instance, uh, two eggs a day, uh, but the eggs were not exactly the same because the animal diets for the hens, same for the cows, etc., was different. And after uh, it was a double blind uh, crossover uh, trial, so very strong in terms of statistics. And after only 15 days, two weeks, we, we changed uh, completely and significantly the, the content of the, of the blood. The, the composition of the of the serum, and after uh, one month, we changed significantly the composition of the red blood cells. And red blood cells, it's not uh, linked to what you have uh, eaten uh, yesterday or the, the day before. Uh, a red blood cell has a life expectancy of a hundred and a half life of hundred and twenty days, so it's quite long. So after only 30 days, we changed the composition of the red blood cells, of all the cells of the body, not regarding what I have eaten yesterday, but regarding what the animals that feed me have eaten before. So for us, it was a, it was a surprise. We, we, we did the trial, but we were, uh, we were not so, we had not so many hopes. We, we didn't expect to see such a change after only one month. So we published the paper and my, my friends from the hospital and from the research center they said look it's very important in terms of uh, of public health because before before us let's say nutrition was uh, eat less this eat more that uh, giving good advice but people who really need to improve their diet they, they don't follow the advice so it, in terms of public health it was important um, my friend, the investigator, the main uh, doctor, the main uh, doctor for the hospital said, Pierre, uh, I, I'm a nutritionist at the hospital for 30 years. And uh, I always say to the people, you, you have a diabetes or obesity or cancer, maybe come home and eat uh, more uh, this, uh, less this. It, it never succeeds because the food habits are very, very difficult to change. And people who need to change are the people who are not so don't hear so much to these advices. So this was the the beginning. So sorry, I take time to explain the the, the first step. And um, then, in August uh, 2000, at uh, in in our town there is a, a public health uh, national school, and this is the place we created the non profitable association. The name is Bleu Blanqueur. We were uh, 20 members in the association on the first day. Some were farmers, scientists, consumers, physicians, health professionals, etc. And what is the meaning of Bleu Blanqueur? It's a blue white heart. Blue was because it's, uh, it's the color of some uh, crops we, we like, like uh, blue lupin, uh, alpha alpha, and of course linseed, because it's blue. Uh, white was the, the, the tra for transparency. And the heart, of course, is the, the red. So altogether, it's a blue-white heart. 
It's uh, not far from bleu, blanc, rouge, our and yours, uh, national flag uh, colors. Uh, so this is was the this was the beginning. T today uh, was still an association, a non profitable association. I have uh, here how we are organized. So the administration council uh, is is made with the uh, people elected by the three pillars. The first one is the economical one. It's uh, not far from 1,000 member. One member, it's a company, a cooperative, a farmer union, a consumers union, etc. And this is the first, the economical uh, uh, pillar. Then comes the what we call the community pillars. We have four communities: the health professional, means uh, physician, dietitians, uh, naturopath, etc. As they are um, not far from 3,000 now in uh, all France. We have uh, the second um, the biggest college is the, the College of the Involved Farmers. It's farmers who are uh, members of the community. They are not uh, committed to be members, but they can be. So they are also, I think they are 5,000 or something like that. Then come the, the chef in France, very important to have a chef. Uh, and they are something like uh, two or so, 300. And uh, the others, the, almost 10,000 people are consumers. They are active, they elect members for the administration council. They are participate to the discussion. And the third pillar, the last one is the scientific board. So it's people from the research institute, uh, public research institute researcher who participate to the, the research with, with us. And the INRAI, INRAI is the uh, National Research Institute for Agriculture and, uh, and Food. And uh, the president of INRAI, which is quite big, thousands of, of researchers in France. And uh, the president is a, a member, not elected, but is a member of our administration council. And all together, we are, all, all the debates, all the discussion are dedicated to, let's say, a collective approach around well eating and the administration council decided the, the specification for each uh, each production so a common objective which is a nice goal improving the food chain and three basic things to characterization of le blanqueur the measures measurements we need to to measure uh, the nutrient density the composition of the feed the carbon uh, content of the soil etc the scientific consensus when we do, when we say we do something for environment we try to do it in such a way that it cannot be a contest and accessibility which is very important for us because the people who really need this improvement in the in the food they eat are generally the the most uh, weak because they are old because they are poor because uh, they are not uh, the this is the people we really need an, an improved improved food. So this scheme is an old one. It's about the biochemistry, but not only. We, we say this is nutrition. This is nutrition. It's uh, the, the balance between uh, omega-3 and omega-6, two, uh, two nutrients, two fatty acids, two polyunsaturated fatty acid is important for to for the mechanism of uh, cardiovascular diseases, brain functionment, tumoral growth, inflammation, lipogenesis, etc. So the balance between omega-3 and omega-6 is really important. This is nutrition. But where the omega-3 and the omega-6 come from, uh, any, uh, there is no, not any animal in the world that's able to synthesize alone the omega-3 and the omega-6. Only the, the, the vegetal, the, the plants have the enzyme to synthesize the first step of the omega-3 and omega-6. And the, the kind of a plant you will have uh, in the diet of the animals, and the animals then will elongate, desaturate this fatty acid, as this will make the, the richness of, the, of an egg, of a butter, of a, of a milk in omega-3 or omega-6. So omega-3 comes from the leaves. Uh, omega-3, you have a lot of omega-3 in grass, you have uh, omega-3 in, uh, in alpha-alpha, in clover, 
also in, in linseed, in, it's quite rare in, uh, in seeds. Uh, usually seeds are rich in omega-6. Linseed and chia in South America uh, are rich in, uh, in omega-3. It's uh, quite an exception. Some other seeds like uh, rapeseed or lupin are not so uh, as rich in omega-3 as uh, linseed or flaxseed. I meant to say linseed or flaxseed. And uh, yeah, but they are not, not so unbalanced. And where do omega-6 come from? Mainly in animal diets from corn and from soybean. So in, in this slide, uh, you have all the, all the importance of, of the balance. Um, well, it's, it's about uh, animal diet, but it's the same for a human diet. It's the plants and the balance in the, the balance in the soil, the balance in the plate will make the balance in the body. For so such important function as a cardiovascular disease, inflammation, lipogenesis, and, uh, and, and so on. So, so this is the basis. So improving the food chain is, for instance, improving, but not only, but for instance, in, in an important way, improving also the omega-6, omega-3 ratio in our plate through agricultural choices. And our specification, we say, what is a blue blanker egg or a blue blanker butter? Uh, it comes from this uh, from this picture. For instance, just for an instant, every we have I think thirty six uh, different uh, specification. One is one is for eggs, another one for the spinach, another one for the honey, one for the trout, etc. So this is only one example about uh, simple because it's a little more complicated. Uh, you have an obligation of means like uh, all the. the the, the quality concept. So, for instance, we say we need a minimum of a vegetal omega-3 enhanced feed. Uh, quantity of omega-3 it can be a linseed, rapeseed, a lupin, whatever you want, grass. Uh, it, it, this is the, the farmer choice. We we don't say to the farmer do like this or do like that. Uh, we say what is this is the goal. Try to reach the goal with your mean with your way. So we, we only say no imported protein linked to deforestation, no palm, no Brazilian soybean, the usage of chemical products like rose factor, uh, formalin, et cetera, is prohibited. We need to, we control that there is a, a variety of seeds in the hens diet. It's a free range hens only. And we have a maximum CO2 for global warming in feed um, and then from this, the people can do whatever they want, but inside this uh, obligation of means. And the obligation of results, it's analytical. It's, uh, for instance, more than 4% of uh, omega-3 in the yolk, in the fatty acid of the eggs, which is uh, three times more than an, an average egg. DHA, which is quite an, an important uh, omega-3 fatty acid, it's two times more than an average age. And the, the ratio, for instance, the omega-6, uh, omega-3 ratio in, uh, in other eggs, the usual eggs, let's say, it's uh, roughly in France between 20 and uh, 25, sometimes more, etc. sometimes 15 when you're lucky. And here it's uh, below four. So it, it's a different egg. It's a different egg because the, the way the hens are, are fed is different. And the, the way the hens are fed is different because the composition of the diet, the plants that participate to the diet are, di are different. And at the end, there is a, a difference in the nutritional benefit. This is just an example of specification. So today, uh, uh, today in France, we last year, it was the General Assembly uh, two weeks ago. So I have the, the data in mind that the turnover of the product with, with our collective brand, with our uh, label, uh, was more than 2 billion uh, euro. And uh, every time uh, uh, an industry or a retailer use our logo, he pays 0.5% to the association. So we have uh, 27 salaries uh, who take care of uh, quality control, uh, communication, link with scientists, etc. And uh, because accessibility is one of our objectives, it's quite developed. For instance, it's uh, in the animal sector. 
is between five to fifteen percent of the uh, of the total production. For instance, here you have uh, pigs. Uh, almost eight percent of the, the French pig production is under the Bleu Blanc Bleu Blanc specification. Uh, here it's uh, maybe difficult to understand, but when it's blue, it's Bleu Blanc This is all the all the pigs that are not conventional. Let's say uh, ninety percent of the pigs in France are conventional. A ten percent are Bleu Blanc red label, uh, organic, etc. Um, organic is in green, Bleu Blanc is in blue, red label. Red label is a, a quality standard in France um, that belongs to the government. So it's, it's mainly, mainly traditional, uh, more traditional farming and uh, um, hedonic quality of the, of the food. So some are only Bleu Blanc some others are Bleu Blanc plus uh, organic. Some are Bleu Blanc plus red label. The, the difference is the obligation of means. For the eggs, six percent of the all the eggs in France, I think it's uh, fourteen billion eggs per, per year, and we have almost one billion eggs in uh, in Bleu Blanc Some are Bleu Blanc Some are Bleu Blanc plus organic. Uh, some are Bleu Blanc plus red label. Some are organic and not Bleu Blanc etc. Uh, but it's a uh, Red label and organic are more uh, obligation of means. So sometimes inside Bleu Blanc, we call it Bio Blanc, Bio Blanc. It's organic producers that add this obligation of results on the way of production. So just a, a picture to see last, it's from the General Assembly. So it's a new product from uh, last year. Last year was a complicated year, but with you see uh, yogurt. Uh, uh, cheese, butter, uh, rabbit, chicken, uh, a lot of things uh, from uh, different uh, small, big companies, etc. That's interesting too in terms of accessibility. We have uh, retailers that are part of the association and uh, they help us. They have also, uh, you see the, the price here. And <laughs> uh, say, so, okay, it's not only for rich people, it's for uh, it's, it's not the, the lowest price, but it's, uh, let's say, 5% more, 10% more. It's better for taste, it's better for health. So it's, uh, the accessibility is quite, uh, is quite big and uh, improves. Uh, here you have, last year we started, uh, uh, we started also in the vegetal uh, sector. Uh, you have a salad, a spinach. We started with uh, honey. Of course, this, uh, this is not the, the, the specification are not about omega-3. It's about uh, the polyphenol or um, honey. I don't remember, but it's something I don't remember exactly. It's something about the color and the quantity of antioxidant which, which are linked. We have uh, trout. We have also sardine, even if it's uh, fish. Even if it's wild fish, the, the kind of uh, oil you use to, to store it and to cook it is different. The, the period you fish the sardine, uh, if it's in spring in uh, Brittany or it's in uh, winter in uh, Portugal, it's not the same. So we, we just uh, analyze and give, uh, give the logo when we are sure of the nutritional quality. Uh, outside France, it's, uh, we are not so much uh, developed. We, we are developed, see, yes, in, in some uh, neighbor countries like uh, Belgium, Italy. Belgium is the, the second uh, place. Italy is the, the third one. We have little things in uh, Russia, but it's good to have Russia because it's a big, big place on the map. But we have only one thing, one, uh, one milk or something like that. Here it's uh, it's funny. I put uh, one egg in Arabic and another one in Hebrew because we we have in Tunisia, Morocco, and Israel also product. Uh, in blue, it's the, the countries where we where you can find Bleu Blanc product in uh, in some uh, shops. Chicken in Saudi Arabia, uh, and in the U.S. Last time I was in the, in Whole Foods, you find some. Uh, Bleu Blanc, uh, Swiss uh, cheese, and French cheese too. But uh, it's a uh, it's big big thing on the map, but it's almost nothing. Uh, we are so in in Japan. We have a Bleu Blanc association. 
who produce uh, beef, uh, high quality beef, milk, uh, eggs, etc. Uh, and we start now. We are quite uh, developed also in some uh, Eastern Europe countries. Like uh, this is uh, Hungarian. I know that's funny. Uh, okay, so that's Bleu Blancœur today. A short uh, story and presentation. Uh, what we've done this last. Uh, 20 years. And then now today I would like to, to speak about uh, what's the, the importance and the meaning of health-oriented agriculture in the today context of the, the COVID pandemic. Uh, so this is what, uh, what you can find on the, on the web. Uh, this is from Johns Hopkins University, the number of cases, deaths, etc. Uh, you speak of drama, you speak of, uh, of death. Uh, when you, well, it's my opinion, what the discussion were about, it was about uh, um, what we call in French just barrière, barrier attitude, not to shake hand, not to give a kiss, not to give a hug, not to be more than uh, three people at the same table, etc. the mask. Uh, that, that was the big first, was a big thing, uh, with a lot of, of discussion around the drugs that will kill the, the virus. Now it's about a vaccine, two billion uh, vaccine today in the world, etc. And what about the field? What about nutrition? Nothing. And, and nothing uh, taken in consideration that maybe, and in nutrition and uh, in agriculture, we, we speak of the field. Uh, and we, we know, you know, that the way that the, the soil and the field is uh, treated, uh, the plant will be more or less resistant to virus and uh, other aggression. But in this case, at least in France, nobody spoke of uh, nutrition and field. But however, when I, like you, I think uh, one year ago, a little more than one year ago, I was sitting in my chair looking at the television, when the virus uh, arrived in Europe. And uh, I heard of the people uh, from the hospital speaking of a cytokine, I if you say cytokine or cytokine storm inflammation, uh, ARDS, acute respiratory distress symptom. And this sounds like, uh, I know these words, these words uh, are related to, to nutrition. So maybe there is something to do with the nutrition also with the field, with the way people are, the resistance that they have. In the, this is in French, but very easy to understand. In the medical press one year ago, they described the diseases, the COVID disease as a, first there is a viral step, a very viral phase, and then the inflammatory uh, uh, phase. And the problem was too much inflammation and uh, when it's uh, serious, when it, you go to death, it's of course it starts with the virus, but it go on with the inflammatory process that is not good enough to, to stop the, the virus. Th there is only one place when people spoke of nutrition. This is a, a screen of the uh, PubMed. The PubMed, it's, the, it's in the US, it's, the, it's located in the US, but it's the International Scientific Library. It's for the peer review article from the scientific press. Uh, yesterday, you had a little less than 3,000 uh, Princeps uh, original articles dedicated to these two words, COVID and nutrition. So the, the field looks important for scientists, uh, only for scientists maybe, but will, it, it, it will come. Uh, this is one of the scientists we, we heard a lot, and he, he gave uh, several time in, uh, in Bleu Blanqueur to, to give information. Philippe Calder is a professor of uh, uh, medicine and uh, immunology in the UK, uh, and I love the, the sentence. My work aims to understand how nutrition affects the functioning of the human body. Better understanding is a key to developing strategy to improve human health and well-being and lower disease risk and treat nutrition-related illnesses. That's his job. He published uh, six articles during the, the COVID dedicated to nutrition, virus, and uh, and I will. The, the next slides come from uh, Philip Calder, and it's so logical that uh, 
I shouldn't be, <laughs> everybody should know, but uh, sometimes basic things are interesting to, to remember. Uh, when you're infected, when the immune system starts working hard to, to kill the, the aggressor, uh, this immune system need, need energy, need more energy, need more building block, need enzymes. And uh, for these enzymes who, who synthesize the, the protein of, of, of the immunity, uh, you need uh, trace elements, you need uh, some es essential amino acid, you need some fatty acid, you need some vitamins, etc. cetera. Uh, we need this. And if we don't take this in consideration, our immunity will not be efficient enough to protect us from the damaging uh, effects uh, of, of the virus. So it's, it's basic. So sorry that <laughs> nutrition is involved in all this mechanism of immunity. Uh, I would like uh, to, to see a, a, a big newspaper asking the question why 90% of the people who had the, the virus were positive uh, finally had nothing and why 10% uh, of them uh, went to the hospital and why 2% of them were, were dead. And especially the, the oldest, the, the poorest, the um, people with diabetes, uh, comorbidity, etc. So Philip Calders, here are all the, the steps of uninfected, infected, uh, and what happened to places for prevention and places in place for treatment. Uh, prevention, of course, it's uh, social distancing, isolation, etc. Uh, but it's it's also helping the immune system to to have a good uh, functionment. Uh, the the poor outcome, the, the, the fatal issue, etc., from COVID is always linked to weaker immunity and excessive inflammation. You can see here uh, the marker of inflammation, like uh, interleukin, uh, which is a, a hormone. Uh, uh, of, of inflammation uh, in uh, in red people in red the people who are dead who uh, it's in the hospital and uh, blue are the people who survive you see the inflammation is excessive uh, and the markers of uh, immunity like the lymphocyte count it's the opposite people who have Excessive inflammation go to, to dead, and people who have uh, too much uh, inflammation uh, went to, to, to death uh, also in, in these experiments in, uh, in China. But we have now a lot of, uh, of data like this, proving the impact of immunity and inflammation. Everybody knows that, but the link between inflammation, immunity, nutrition, and agriculture is still to, still to prove. Uh, so this sentence, uh, microbes are, are nothing, only the, the field uh, is important. It's funny because it's a well-known sentence and these uh, three guys are very famous uh, French doctors. One, the, the one here, I don't know if you see my arrow, this one is Louis Pasteur. Louis Pasteur is the guy who discovered the microbe one uh, maybe 200 years ago. A uh, little less, uh, and he, he was the inventor of the of the vaccine, Louis Pasteur. Uh, the other one, this one, is Antoine Béchamp. It was his opponent. Uh, he was also a scientist, but he, he believed that uh, the microbe was only um, a, a bad evolution of our own cells. So he said the microbe is nothing. The field is important. And this one is Claude Bernard, also a French uh, doctor. Maybe that the father in, in France, we say that he is the father of a modern medicine and experimental medicine. And he said that Pasteur and Béchamp are right. The microbe is nothing compared to the field. This was uh, almost uh, two, 200 years ago. And what happened with the field? Uh, so I'm not a Pasteur or Béchamp, but uh, with some friends from the... Uh, medical Research Institute in, the, in France, we, we wrote in the scientific press, this peer review article, uh, may omega-3 fatty acid dietary supplement help reduce several complications in the COVID-19 patients. Uh, and the, the complete article uh, drew an hypothesis from soil to cell. 
as you, you saw before, if I, I have more omega-3, I will have less inflammation, but omega-3 come from the plants, the plants come from the soil, etc., cetera, et cetera. Uh, so This was published in September, so it, it was, we wrote it in the early day of the, of the pandemic. So what's happened roughly, what are we explaining? This is a cell membrane. When you have a, a virus that arrives, it, it comes into the cell like a pneumocyte, cell from the, the, from the, the lung, no, the lung no. uh, he enters the, the cell with a receptor. Uh, and when he enters the, the cell, you have a receptor that say, okay, there is a virus, let's start inflammation. Inflammation always starts with omega-6 from the membrane. Omega-6 and omega-3 are in the membrane. Uh, and omega-6 start the recruitment of this uh, pro-inflammatory cytokine, cytokine. Uh, and it is what we call the promotion of the inflammation, the promotion phase. And this is led when it's not stopped. This, this can lead to cytokine storm, too much, uh, too much inflammation and even uh, acute respiratory distress uh, syndrome, which is the, the main cause of death in the case of uh, COVID. But in the membrane, you have omega-6 and you have also omega-3. What they call in the, the omega-3 index is the quantity of omega-3 in the cells, in the membranes. Uh, so when the virus enters the, the, the cell, the omega-6 starts inflammation, the promotion, which is very important. But the omega-3 have a part of the job. They must stop the inflammation, what we call the resolution phase. Uh, but the quantity of omega-3 in the membrane absolutely depended from the way we eat and the way uh, soil and animals have eaten before goes from 2% to 14%. At 40%, 14%, for sure, you will not have excessive inflammation. At 2%, for sure, you will have excessive inflammation. Uh, that's the, the, the picture, uh, the, the slide I show at the beginning of the, uh, of the lecture. Uh, red and green. Red is the, for if you are in this, uh, in this side of the landscape, uh, in your, that's happening in the field with a lot of corn, with a lot of soybean, a sunflower in France, to, uh, you will go to an undesirable uh, quantity of omega-3 in your cell. If you are here with a lot of grass, uh, pasturing, uh, linseed, uh, clover, alfalfa, rapeseed, then you will go more to the 8%, which is a very low factor uh, of risk. Uh, resolution uh, is the process to stop the inflammation, to actively turning off the inflammation with a lot of cell mediators. I, I will stop biochemistry here. But uh, I, I just wanted to emphasize the, the role of, uh, of the food chain because we, we need this uh, harmony between omega-3 and omega-6. And this harmony in our body is absolutely dependent from the, the harmony in the field and in the animal diet. If you have a look, uh, this is the, in, in some countries, when it's in yellow, it's a dedicated study to look what is the quantity of omega-3 in the blood in uh, South Korea, in Japan, Norway, etc. cetera. Uh, when it's in white and not in the yellow, it's only small studies uh, in a in special population. Uh, and this is the number of, uh, of death from uh, COVID uh, per 1 million people. Uh, if you, uh, this is not, this is not uh, uh, epidemiology, this is not statistics, it's only, uh, okay, maybe we can have a look on it, it's only an Excel file, it's not a lot of things, but um, well, from 12% uh, omega-3 in, uh, in South Korea, uh, the data come from the, the 7th of June, we are the 9th, so it's quite uh, good, 100 dead in, uh, in Japan, uh, 100 and, uh, 1,700 in France, uh, 100, 800 in the US, 2,800 in the Czech Republic, which is, they did a lot of dedicated study and we are in relationship with the hospital teams there. As they know that they have a, a big problem with the omega-3 there. Uh, 
Uh, and, but, and this is an epidemiological uh, paper about it. And here you have the, the data. So you see uh, the quantity of, uh, they call it marine omega-3. It's not marine, it's uh, EPA, DHA. You can find it in the egg also. But wild fish comes from a food chain based on algae. And if we have a, a terrestrial food chain based on, uh, on grass, uh, grass and algae synthesize uh, basic omega-3 and then animals uh, make it more uh, uh, more complicated, go from ALA to DHA, etc. But you, you see from, uh, uh, from Eastern Mediterranean to Southwest uh, Asia, uh, the number of, uh, of dead, the fatality rate with the different uh, region, with a lot of countries per region, it's a big, big job. And uh, this is a, a few slides from uh, a friend of us is a, a professor of medicine in South Dakota, Sioux Falls, uh, William Harris. And he came and gave, gave a lecture uh, last week uh, and he did his own uh, research on it. So he, he worked with the omega-3 for a long time. Just a, a slide of him um, showing that all the inflammation uh, and um, biomarker are absolutely linked with a very high significance to the quantity of the omega-3 in the red blood cells. Uh, we knew even at the beginning of the COVID that when you add omega-3 with fish oil in the, in the, the patient in the, uh, in the hospital, when you add it in the enteral or parenteral nutrition, you decrease the dead. Where this is what they call a meta-analysis, two meta-analyses. 15 trials in each meta-analysis proves that uh, adding uh, omega-3, so adding uh, food, fish oil, it's, uh, you decrease the mortality, you decrease the need of oxygenation, etc. So the, the treatment, of course, we, I think with Bleu Blanqueur, we are in a, in a area of a prevention, not of treatment, of course, but it's only the demonstration. And at um, Harris did this his job, I think it, it was at the Los Angeles hospital. They took a blood sample from the, the people arriving the hospital with the COVID and uh, he did quartiles, the quantity uh, of, regarding the quantity of omega-3 in the blood. First quartile is very low, under, uh, under four. Um, quartile uh, four is more than uh, 5.7, which is not very high, but the people with eight and 10%, you will not find them at the hospital. And the decrease in mortality between the, uh, the highest omega-3 content in, uh, in blood and the lowest, it's a, a decrease of a 75%, which is a, a big, he call it a pilot study. It is a pilot study because he didn't have a, a enough patient and he did, he did nothing about the patient. He didn't know just the age and the quantity of omega-3. So maybe other bias, etc. cetera. But it's quite interesting to, to look uh, also. Uh, I ask also uh, Jean-Michel Le Serre, which is a, a top uh, nutritionist in, uh, in France, uh, to give also a lecture during this COVID period about uh, what we call a, a barrier food strategy. And uh, i not make the lecture he gave, but th this, this slide is interesting because he speak of immunity, he speak in, of inflammation, and what you see in the upper part of the, of the slide vegetables, sun, fish, linseed, uh, egg, butter, etc. Uh, this is uh, just the link between, uh, again, biochemistry as the chemistry of life, uh, the importance of the food chain. So let's talk of nutrition in field, not only of uh, vaccine and drugs and, uh, uh, and social distancement. Let's talk also of food nutrient density because, uh, of course, to be stronger uh, against the, the virus, to, to reinforce uh, immunity, we need polyphenols, we need vitamin D, we need omega-3, we need the trace elements, etc. But all the food are not equal for, for it. Uh, and let's talk how, how the food is produced. 
and to have a relation to the food nutrient density and to our own health. So just an example, a small example, in milk, you have a little fat, you have between four and 5% fat in the, in the milk coming directly from, uh, from the cow. And in this uh, four, four percent fat, you have uh, in winter time when cows eat only corn and soybean, you have zero point two percent of uh, omega three in the milk fat. And when it's spring, uh, you have a little more than one percent, five times more. The specification of Le Blanqueur, it's a minimum zero point seven, and the average is is one percent. 1%, it's only 5% more. It's um, almost nothing, 5% more of nothing. It could be nothing. It is not. Because in, uh, in France, I don't know in the US, but in France, we eat as an average a little more than, than 30 grams of, uh, but, of, butter, uh, of uh, milk fat, mainly in cheese, also in a butter, yogurt, etc. Uh, if you eat cheese and butter and yogurt from this milk, you will cover 3% of your need for omega-3. If you eat the same cheese, but with this uh, animal diet, with, uh, with grass, or if it's winter with uh, a variety of uh, a grass silage, uh, a horse bean, alfalfa, linseed, etc., then you will cover 20 percent it's not the same and this is nutrition in nutrition you don't have uh, you say silver bullet it's uh, i don't know if the translation is good but you you don't have miracles it, it's only an addition of small things that make the, the great things uh, for the vi vitamin d it's the same we have studies that uh, show how many uh, vitamin d which is very important against the, the virus uh, for immunity, for stimulating immunity, how many vitamin D in our blood? Uh, the, the needs are between 20 and 30 nanograms per milliliter. And 80% of the French population is under the, the, the basic need. Uh, vitamin D is not exactly a vitamin because we can synthesize it in the skin when there is sun. Uh, so part of the vitamin D comes from the sun uh, and part of the vitamin D comes from the food. In France, it's mainly the, the first source is the butters and come the eggs and then the fish. In Norway or Japan, it's uh, cod and, uh, and fish, uh, oily fish that provide the biggest amount of vitamin D. So let's say in, uh, at least in France, 50% of our needs comes from eggs and dairy. But uh, chicken, uh, hens, let's say hens and uh, cows, they synthesize their own vitamin D3 in the skin, like we do. But for this, they need sun. So they need to go outside. They need to go pasturing, or at least to go outside and have sun. If you look at the this is interesting paper showing that the same hen in the same farm going outside, if you, you make the difference uh, even from, uh, from spring to autumn, you have difference because you have left sun, the day are longer in spring, etc. For the cow's milk, it can go from one to, to 10 sometimes. Uh, so, of course, milk and eggs provide 50% of the uh, vitamin D we, from our food, but uh, there are so, so big differences in the way animals are, are treated that. Uh, it's also a food chain story. And for the vegetables, it's, it's the same. We work with a very nice uh, US uh, organization and we learned a lot of them for a lot from them. I don't know if you know them. They are called the Bionutrient Food Association. Thank you, Dan, and thank you, uh, people of the uh, LBFA. Uh, and this is, a, um, this is a copy, but you, you know this. Uh, in carrots, the quantity of uh, polyphenols can go from one to 200, which is a, a lot. So of course we need polyphenol for the microbiote. The microbiote is a very important part of our defense line. But uh, the, if the advice is eat carrots to provide polyphenol, uh, the second question must be, okay, what kind of carrot? <laughs> uh, so uh, let's say the 
the challenge of nutrition is the nutrient density. Uh, omega-3 in eggs, it can go from one to 10. Vitamin D in milk, one to five. Antioxidant in vegetables, one to 20. So the pictures that say we need uh, omega-3, vitamin D, polyphenol to strengthen our immunity and the inflammation process, that's true. That's, that's really depending the way vegetables and animals are, are produced. Just a, a word about uh, environmental density, because this is the, the second big challenge about climate, and it can be measured too. I will be sh short on it, but uh, if you remember the specification for the Blue Blanquer uh, production, we, we say, for instance, for hens, no palm, no important soybean uh, related to deforestation, uh, which means that the, the footprint um, of a blue blanker egg from the national databases, official national databases, is 18% less than another free range egg. Uh, so the omega 6, omega 3 ratio is lower, but the carbon footprint is, is lower too. And that's, that's the double challenge. Tomorrow we'll have to deal with other things, what we call life cycle assessment. So we, this is the kind of things we do dealing with uh, ecotoxicity, biodiversity, eutrophication, et cetera, because this will be the challenge for tomorrow. So we have to improve all the time the specification we, we write to, to deal with these new challenges for tomorrow. So let's say for the take home message for uh, uh, the link with the, the pandemic is first, it's quite a surprise, but the most efficient barrier nutrients are in animal fat. I don't know in the US, but in France, uh, when you say animal fat, ah, people are disgusting. That's well, not good. It's not good, but long chain omega-3 and vitamin D3, it's, it's only from uh, animal origin. So animals participate to ecology, to the quality of the soil, etc. The fertilization, uh, they eat grass uh, sometimes, uh, most of the times. Uh, and this animal nutrient, animals are not only a provider of uh, vitamin D and omega-3 and uh, interesting nutrients for us, they use it for them. And it's also a marker of uh, animal health. And health is an important part of animal welfare. Uh, and if you have a lot of vitamin D, if you have a lot of omega-3 in uh, milk or eggs, it's absolutely related to the way animals are fed and treated. Uh, nutrients are also in relation with uh, environmental health, as you saw in the precedent slide. Same, of course, for antioxidant and uh, polyphenol. This, uh, this data from uh, Biodiversity and Food Association are incredible. Of course, I think it's in relationship with season, fertilization, variety, and, but the quality of life and soil, the carbon content, the quantity of worm, the, the, this kind of things we can measure are uh, very important, uh, I think, for, for the future. And uh, these production patterns drive both nutritional and environmental quality. So that's the, the way for the pandemic, this hypothesis coming from soil to, to cell. And then I will end with a, a tomorrow. So what is our project, our goal, our future? This comes also from uh, Professor uh, Philippe Calder. You say, you see, I like this, uh, this table because uh, you need vitamin A, B, C, folate, uh, zinc, selenium, and uh, where they come from. You, you can uh, read uh, milk, uh, broccoli, orange, uh, fish, uh, vegetable oil, shellfish, etc. So it's, it's what it's uh, be omnivorous, eat everything in small quantities, but eat ev everything because variety and diversity is probably the basis for the best uh, regimens. Um, but it's not enough. Our goal is to say for tomorrow, it's not to only to say eat a little part of everything, say eat everything, but from well-fed soils, plants and animals, because this is the, the basic for the, the food chain. For instance, last year, we, every year we, we give the data uh, with a third party uh, body. Last year in France, Bleu Blanquer uh, uh, provided uh, 800 tons of omega-3 back 
from the from the grass, from the the flaxseed uh, uh, fields, etc. Uh, but not only; it also brought uh, more uh, grass, more alfalfa in hectares, more linseed, more horse bean, less corn, less soybean, uh, and this is an impact on our carbon footprint and uh, other things. So, omega three, vitamin D, polyphenol interesting for the resistance to the virus and other civilization disease but this is dependent on two things how we choose how we choose to feed ourselves and how animals and soils are, were fed before it's consumer's choice plus farmer's choice for this double challenge one thing very important for us this is a table from a canadian researcher speaking of the the again the the, the virus and the, virus are strong when we are weak and the weaker people it's the old people and the people with low grade uh, low grade inflammation diseases like diabetes uh, obesity and so on so it's very important to to deal with accessibility and not only with elite food elite food for elite uh, people uh, for me for tomorrow it's it's a big message same for the climate you cannot be i'm the better of the better uh, but it's only 1% or 0.5% of the production uh, that is done. As you, you need accessibility. So at the end, uh, One Health is not a marketing claim. It's a measurable concept. Uh, we developed specification and obligation of measure for that. The amount of nutrient of interest is measured from field to plate and even in our blood. Uh, and the past, uh, it's, it's a permanent uh, research activity because it's not a simple pass. It's, it's a quite narrow one. And uh, the collateral effect of this concept of food barrier uh, with health-oriented agriculture can be measured in terms of uh, climate, uh, animal health, economic, etc. cetera. Uh, and it would be probably in the future interesting uh, together to 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 create a, a strong message i think it will come uh, people uh, uh, people think and the, the message re regarding the role of uh, our own immunity how to strengthen it the relationship with the mode of agriculture will, will come a barrier food uh, a production with this concept of barrier food starts in in the field in the soil and i think under the field under the soils with the life with living soils and living fields that produce a nice uh, nice product so at the end uh, it's not only a marketing claim uh, i think uh, health um, blue blocker what we are we we develop um, proves i said eight uh, eight clinical trials the, the actual one is done with uh, old people in uh, uh, in dedicated houses uh, in relationship with infection for for two years, and the last one, which is not finished, is with a pregnant uh, pregnant uh, mother, uh, with the impact of what they eat. They eat the same quantity again. It's always the same uh, configuration of our trials. The, but eggs are not the same because the hens are not fed the same way, etc. Uh, and we make analysis on the on, on the quality of the blood and the microbiote of the of the baby. And see, so people uh, people are ready to pay a little more for their health if it's uh, if it's true, if it's uh, solid. It's uh, uh, so blue blanker it can be a driver for agricultural change because the driver is the consumer, the eater. When you eat, you don't consume. I don't like the term the consumer for, for the food because you, you incorporate all the quality of the food, which means also the quality, the way it's produced, the ethical, a lot of things. Uh, and um, the health benefits must be a driver for changes uh, uh, upper in the food chain. Uh, that's my uh, my conclusion and for the discussion some elements uh, we are in the toolbox of public health we really are in the toolbox of public health and health benefit is in the toolbox of sustainable agriculture we know the place of animal nutrition nutrients of vegetal nutrients 
we know the link between animal health and human health. Uh, be careful with accessibility, the strong message for us now. I don't know if the translation in good in French we say alimentation à deux vitesses, two speed diets for rich people and for poor people. And uh, we know from this uh, pandemic that uh, the big labs for uh, drugs and genetic en engineering did the job and they provided solution. But uh, farmers, agronomists, health professionals, chefs, uh, uh, everybody in the chain uh, can, can be is, is has has to be his, uh, his own job. And uh, at the end, one health concept is a driver to implement this uh, new agriculture dedicated to living soils and healthy animals. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay. Thank you very much, Pierre. That was uh, brilliant. <laughs> I'm sorry, my computer crashed during the um, uh, presentation, yeah. so I'm I'm on from my phone. I don't have video access. So, uh, but I mean, absolutely stunning. I when I when I saw you present in France, I said, "Wow, I've been talking about these concepts for almost ten years now, and I've been looking for anybody who's been doing anything resembling this." And I thought no, there were nobody, there wasn't anybody there. <laughs> I just hadn't looked outside of the English language. So, um, Thank you. yeah, really, really impressive. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if you want to stop your, your screen share, um, but let me see here. Um, I'm not seeing on my screen any open questions, uh, although I think there were some on the, on the computer when I last saw that. So uh, okay. people yeah. should feel free to type in the Q&A or yeah, go for it. Okay, so I can read three questions. First one is, are diet in the US and Brazil the highest in omega-6 in diet, corn soy? Uh, they have highest uh, death rate also in Europe, but maybe stronger strain of COVID there. Uh, yes, for sure, US and Brazil are the highest, uh, have the highest omega-6 uh, ratio in, uh, in the blood. Uh, when I spoke of the omega index, it's not in the plate; it's in the in the blood. Uh, so, you, 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 in the US, in Canada, they did a, a big job uh, to have the average uh, omega three content in blood uh, with two thousand people representative of the population, like they do in the, like they did in the Czech Republic or in South Korea. Uh, in US, they didn't, but we have, a, for instance, I, I read a paper about uh, uh, the American footballer in the people who pl play professional football. I know the ratio is four, which is quite low in uh, uh, and it's uh, athlete, uh, athletic uh, people. In Brazil, I don't have data, but I suppose with the quantity of uh, corn and soy, it must be quite uh, quite high. Uh, quite low, omega index must be very low, and you, you're right, it's also the countries where you have a, a high um, a high number of, of death from uh, COVID. The highest is in Czech Republic, and Czech Republic has no access to sea, and uh, with the agriculture like we have today, with a very low content of omega-3 in animal terrestrial animal product, the main uh, the main source of a long chain omega-3 is fish, and in this country like uh, Hungary uh, or Czech Republic, they have a lot a lot of deaths. They have a very low in Czech Republic. It's 3.6 the the level, which is lowest than in the US. Because in US you have fishes, uh, uh, probably there are difference between uh, uh, between the the coast, uh, Pacific and Atlantic coast, and the inside the uh, countries. I don't know, but I, I think this data will come with a serious uh, epidemiologist who just started. Uh, I'm in connection with some uh, epidemiologists in the in the US, uh, people from the NIH. Um, another one from the University of Arizona. I know they, they work on it. All right. <laughs> I, I, I can, I'm starting to see questions as they come in. Um, you said there were three there. Do you want to run through those three I think you have and then, and then I can get you to start walking through the rest of them? 
there is a fourth one. So the second is, have you presented this data? To yeah, someone? to, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I saw that one. So yeah. <laughs> they ignored the fact. They have not asked yet. <laughs> no, but I discussed, uh, I have a friend who was the, the number one in nutrition in the National Institute of Health in Washington. Yeah. I, I, visited, uh, I visited him, he visited us. His name is Joe Eben. He was fired in the, after 30 years of service during the last uh, administration. But uh, they know that I'm probably the, the best uh, scientist in this field in the world uh, in the US. But uh, let's say in France, it's the same. Huh? We are very good scientists. We have a lot of data. Uh, we don't have a strong support from, from the government. I, I think it's not only, uh, it's a sociology. I think that I, I just tell you that it's a, a kind of digression, but uh, there is an experiment in uh, social psychology. They call it the gorilla experiment. It was in a, an American university. Uh, the students were, were here, 200 students, and um, there was a basketball team and uh, the teacher, the professor, asked the student to, to make the, the counting of how many pass, how many times the ball go from one player to another. So they were very focused on, on this. And then a, a gorilla came, a, a man, <laughs> a man with gorilla suits, uh, with uh, his, uh, his feet on his, uh, on his chest, etc. And only half of the of the students saw the gorilla. They call it uh, uh, blindness of uh, inattention, something like that. It's so evident when you are in the in the field when you see the data. F from the beginning, it was so evident that uh, nutrition had such a role, and it, it should be interesting to to reinforce the the diet of the people in the in the for the old people in, in the, the houses, for the old people, I don't know the name in English. Uh, in France, we had a lot of deaths in this, and you see what they eat, it's absolutely disgusting. So we need... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think people got your point. I want to keep going so more questions can be answered. And if you turn your screen share off, maybe people can see your, your face more. Uh, if, uh, it looks like you still have your screen being shared. You turned your slide off, but you yes, didn't I stop to, sharing. I have to stop the Aretil partage. Okay, yeah. There we go. Okay. okay. Um, so Emmanuel asks, have you heard of AFRAN, A-F-R-A-N, created 1952 by Dr. Jacques Boss? He was advocating similar ideas and raised red flags on chemical-based agriculture. He was also a close friend of Poiland, he says. No, sorry. No. I will look. Yeah. Association Francaise Research Alimentum Normal based in France. So that my French accent wasn't horrible. No, no, sorry. Yeah, okay. Um so uh Sherry it just as more of a comment here. Um what a powerful presentation. The connection between life of all things contributing to the health of ourselves and our planet is such a critical connection. I also love that you are connecting all of the different fields of agriculture, chefs, and consumers. This is the same community that I'm trying to connect through flavor and nutritional guideline. Excellent presentation, very inspiring. So. Thank you, Shelley. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Bill asks, uh, what about vegans? Um, high flax in, in nut butters and uh, purslane. What, what are your thoughts about animal, you know, substitution of of, of plant-based foods for some of these um, ad addressing these these critical nutritional needs of the body. Sorry, this was the question from Bill. Um, yeah, about vegan veganism, and <laughs> and if you don't eat butter or milk or eggs or meat, um, and you're substituting those things with plant-based products, soy, soy burgers and things like that. Um, well, he says flax is something that they could, vegans can eat, but do you have any comments on the sort of the, the plant-based food, quote unquote, yeah. diet, you know, yeah. fad that's happening now and it's relation to all this? Well, if I understood the question about vegan, 
most of the vegans uh, they know that they have deficiencies because we, they don't have uh, animal nutrients. If you type on uh, Google uh, B12, for instance, B12 is a typical animal uh, nutrient. Uh, you, you will, if you type B12, you will find a lot of uh, specialties with B with B12 produced with uh, uh, how do you say genetic engineering with bacteria or fungi's. Uh, dedicated to vegan, because they know that B12 is a problem for them. Uh, it, uh, for the long chain omega-3, uh, flax, it's uh, alpha-linolenic, but you need, when you give a flax to, to a hen, she will produce DHA for you, because she, she made the egg for the, the young chicken, so she's important for his uh, brain, etc. Uh, women can do more DHA than men. They do a lot of things better than we do, but uh, this one too, they produce DHA. But um, vegan cannot uh, make a, a DHA from flax, but uh, for, for them, there are some uh, microalgae that produce DHA. Uh, the only vegetal uh, branch that can produce DHA is some, uh, some quite rare uh, microalgae, and, and they can find DHA, they can find uh, almost uh, everything. The question is uh, for me, but it's a personal comment. I prefer to have all the nutrients in my plate with uh, uh, dense, uh, with high nutrient content in uh, vegetables and animal products than uh, from pills, but uh, it's uh, only my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> a very gentle, a very gentle response. Um, I, I, uh, I'm not sure if people heard the, your point about how significant um, uh, Blue Blancor is. I, th I think you made it about the percentage of, of milk and eggs and, you know, et cetera, in the French market cheese. Um, Two billion euros is a, it's a, you know, that's a, that's a significant amount of, amount of money. Um, what more are your thoughts about how this moves forward? I mean, we've been talking about instrumentation and, and things, but as someone who's been really leading the world, as far as I know, on a, you know, a nutrition-based label, nutrient-density-based nutri nutrient label, effectively, you know, and you're stepping back and this is the end of your career. Um, I'm sure you have a lot of thoughts and wisdom and maybe suggestions for those of us who are hoping to take it forward. I'd, I'd love to hear anything that is stimulated. No, I, I love the, not only the discussion we had together, but also the, the work we've done together because we have implemented in, in Europe your, your lab, your technology, uh, then, and uh, I think that the next step, it will be quite difficult in terms of uh, sociology. I, I don't think people will like to check them, themselves, themselves uh, before uh, buying a tomato or a, or a cheese, which is the quantity of uh, uh, lycopene or omega-3. Uh, uh, because the relationship we have with, with food is, is different, is a friendly relationship. But I think uh, a very few number of, uh, of quite convinced uh, eater consumer uh, with a dedicated website can say, okay, I have analyzed the, this cheese from this company and the level of omega-3 is, is very low. I have analyzed this carrot from this company and the level is very low. And this can make a very big pressure uh, on the people from the, the industry. Uh, after, uh, first we need the technology. And I know then that you work on it, a lot of people work on it. After we, we have to, to find a way to use it. With Bleu Blancard, uh, we have the communities. We have the, this convinced consumer uh, we say con consume actor in French, which means they are consumer, but they are also actor of the, the quality of the, of the food. They can do the job. And uh, I, re I remember our first discussion together, the pressure must not be only on the farmer. Uh, it can help the farmer to produce the, uh, the good density product at the good uh, picking moment, for instance, for uh, vegetables or fruits. Uh, but uh, this must. This is also our fight. We need to support high quality 
product, giving uh, giving money to the farmer. If they produce well, they need to earn more money, and uh, this this is the reason uh, health benefit can help uh, can help because if the people can put a little more money, uh, we have to control how it will go back <laughs> to the farmer at the opposite side of the food chain. But as you see, this is not biochemistry, this is uh, economy. Uh, and, and sociology. <laughs> but we, we are a community, so we can, uh, yeah. we can do a lot of things together. And uh, thank you for the invitation. But I must say, I'm, uh, I always uh, happy and proud when I discuss with you because you, we are not on the same side of the Atlantic Ocean, but we, we have the same goal. It's a yeah. noble goal. Mm. Yeah. I, I, to the point about um, the human health benefits, I think you had told me about a study you did where um, I think you called them canteens, but there was a, some, a city that was working with your growers and they were you know, choosing to buy the, the beef or the eggs or the milk for the school lunches and the and the the hospital workers um based you know on the nutritional value but also the correlation with increased water quality there was a connection to the aquifer you know the river that that was where the water for the city came from they worked with the farmers upstream and it, you, oh, you know yeah. what i'm talking about so it was a very very interesting story about how you're able to bring together all these different yeah, it, pieces it, of it, the society yeah it, it's the beginning of the project so it's, it's the city of Rennes, the city uh, where I live, not, not far. Uh, it's a city of uh, four, 400,000 inhabitants, and they have a problem with the quality of water. And uh, they decided to encourage a farmer to have a better practice, less corn, less uh, more protein seeds, uh, less uh, pesticide, etc., less chemicals, and uh, less nitrates, etc. And, uh, but it's quite difficult to explain uh, to a farmer that he must make efforts because he is on the place where water is a uh, start to go 50 kilometers from here to, to the town. And it's quite difficult to explain to, uh, to a consumer that he must pay uh, a little more uh, his butter or his cheese because a farmer make efforts for water that comes from the, from the town. So what they did is they, um, they encouraged the, the farmer to produce more. They control. There is an obligation of measurement of the quality of the, of the water, an obligation of means also in the, in the field. And then if you are a farmer and you, you implement this improvement, you have a, an easier access to the canteens, the collective uh, uh, food, uh, canteens, uh, schools, hospitals, etc., uh, and you will have a, a bonus, and you can enter the market and sell your products, even if you're a little more expensive. So they started. Uh, they, they started. Uh, we started because I'm part of the project. We started uh, one year ago. And uh, we have very, very little product now in the canteen. It's very, the, very hard, but interesting job. Again, it's, it's a good goal. It's, it's interesting. And uh, I hope we will uh, we'll make the connection between uh, involved farmer and uh, in, involved uh, consumer. But it's yeah. so difficult. The water is... Uh, <laughs> I thought maybe I guess I thought it was farther along than, than you're saying, but I've always thought that, you know, as we begin to make these connections between, um, you know, chronic illness and, you know, urban populations and underprivileged people and nutritional factors that as we're able to assess the quality of food, then that would be an amazing opportunity for organizing. Um, there's a lot of people who are very concerned about you know, uh, underprivileged people's access to, to food and its food quality and their, and their overall health. And the government is responsible for paying a lot of that. So it seems like a, a, a coalition could be built around those things, a mutual, mutual self-interest. Okay. That will come. Will come. <laughs> <laughs> that was too fast. <laughs> I speak too fast. Um, okay. Uh, so Sherry has a question about uh, what are your thoughts on omega-3s coming from sea plants 
versus the fish itself. She's heard that it's the plants that are producing the omegas, the fish are simply consuming it from the plants. Is this true? Perhaps we can avoid or manage the overfishing situation. And Bill says, for example, relating to Sherry's last question, um, wakame has omega six to three ratio of one to 18. Can we benefit from that or are fish needed to convert it to DHA? Well, alga is like uh, grass. It's uh, omega-3 is part of the chloroplast, of the chlorophyll. Uh, chlorophyll is chloroplast, is the pl chloroplast, you say chloroplast in English? Chloroplast, yep. Yeah. Chloroplast, the chloroplast uh, is the place where energy from the sun becomes uh, glucose and energy for us. Uh, Ah, the synthet, uh, chlorophyllic uh, synthet, synthesis. And uh, to make this, you need, uh, uh, you need omega-3. You need the, the more supple membrane you can have in the vegetal world. And this omega-3 is called alpha-linolenic with 18 carbons. Uh, it's exactly the same ratio in uh, wakame than in, uh, in grass, uh, clover, or alpha-alpha. It's the same because it's, it's the same... Uh, um, the same use during the chlorophyllic uh, synthesis. But after, in the, what is better in the sea, is that you have a very long food chain. So you have this uh, vegetal uh, algae, then come the zooplankton, very small uh, shrimps, and then uh, bigger shrimps, then uh, carniv small carnivorous fish. And at the end, at the end of the, of the food chain, you have the, the salmon, the, the animal who make the elongation, it's the, these little shrimps. It's not the algae, it's not the fish. The fish is unable to produce omega-3, even to elongate, is only able to eat and concentrate. So if you have an old salmon, they have eaten a lot of little fish, they have eaten a lot of little shrimps, they have eaten a lot of little algae, then you'll have a lot of DHA. Uh, the cosa exenoic with 22 carbons in the salmon, uh, but coming from the food chain and uh, bypassing it, eating directly, uh, directly algae. It's interesting, like when we eat a salad, uh, uh, but we, we this, this is the food chain story. Animals do it better than, uh, than grass or algae. A cow eat grass and make cheese. It's fantastic. <laughs> we cannot digest. Uh, we cannot <laughs> digest grass and produce camembert. Why would you want to eat grass when you could eat camembert? <laughs> <laughs> in this sense, yeah. You're a true Frenchman. <laughs> oh, so um, I'll 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 rephrase my previous question and maybe I'll try to say it slower. Uh, here in the US, we have now what we know has been going on in Europe for some time, which is that the government is starting to take responsibility for medical bills for the people. Um, I know here in the state of Massachusetts, I think it's something like 30 or 40 percent of the state budget goes to support medical care. Um, we have a lot of um, an understanding that there are certain communities of people that are, you know, generally have higher levels of chronic illness, degenerative disease, generally underprivileged, generally, you know, you know, in urban, not always. Um, at some point, it seems to me a a coalition could be built between those people that are concerned about the health of these communities and the governmental agencies. And my thought is. You know, if we can, if we know that the the beef that's sold, that's made into hamburgers at your local elementary school has a very bad nutritional ratio, then using, you know, government funds to, to focus, you know, money purchasing higher quality food could be a, you know, a plausible scenario. So I'm, I wonder what in that realm are you aware of happening in Europe or anywhere else globally? Are there any models where these things are being put together? 
Well, uh, maybe it's a, it's a chance in the in the US that you start now, because we are so so used to this uh, to this social uh, social help that uh, health expenses for people are, are greatest are, are free. Uh, people don't spend money in France for for health because it, it's paid by the community. So when I started Bleu Blanquer, some people from the National Consumers Union say, why should I pay more for health benefit? Because health is free. But uh, now we have some, uh, I can send you some, uh, some paper we are writing now with the researcher on the, on the side of economy. And they have models, not very good models, but they have models to say, for instance, uh, how many million euro you spend uh, to avoid uh, one death, uh, one, one year of a quality life. Uh, they publish this, and this is a base for, uh, um, for public uh, policies. And uh, maybe there is a connection to do and if it's the, the starting of uh, the start of something, if I understand well in the, in the U.S., maybe it's a, it's a good period to say with the American scientists uh, from uh, nutrition and economy to say uh, you will spend a lot of money uh, with the, the consequences. And maybe you will uh, save money if you go directly to the cause and uh, you spent of the quality of the beef or the quality of the carrot this is the cause and if you spend a little more money uh, to help i don't know how to help the farmer or to help the canteens or the hospital etc with better food maybe you will save money uh, with the health expenses uh, later uh, i i can make uh, if, if we keep the contact, uh, then we can continue the discussion with relationship with a, a scientist of the economic, economical side that work on the cost of uh, prevention against the cost of treatment. Uh, and uh, I have a friend in the University of Arizona, I will be very happy, he's an epidemiologist, but he will be very happy to, to discuss this with, uh, with you if you want. I can make the connection. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, I, we had Catherine Couch on um, earlier in the conference, and she was talking about the work she's been doing with hospitals in California, and effectively, the the you know the healthcare system um, paying the hospitals based on um, readmission rates. So, you know, they will the hospital would only get paid if the you know. Um, the patient did not come back within 30 days. And so they've been doing medically tailored meals, providing whole foods. Um, her focus has been organic whole foods. And she has not been focusing on these, you know, ratios of omega threes and omega sixes and things like that. But I see a very, I see a very um, exciting opportunity um, near in the future in this, um, in this area. So um okay we're about out of time um do you have any any final words you'd like to share with us uh just thank you <laughs> thank you and hope we'll keep the, the contact in the future it's uh, uh it's always a pleasure and again we have the same goal so yeah hope we'll reach it <laughs> yes i i know we will and i i'm just i continue to be really uh, impressed with everything you've been doing and love to have people know about it. And I'm, I'm glad we've finally had you here at this conference and hopefully, hopefully the, the <laughs> your work will be able to spread here in the Anglophone world. Um, it's, I think that's very important. Yeah, I have to insert so. my English. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think Thank the you. papers have been translated. They don't have to talk to you, but I think you've, you've led the way on some of these things that people could use for citations and making arguments. So, um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Be well. Thank you. You too. Yeah. Bye.